Okay, our last speaker is Xu Lei, and he will be presenting a DSL for developing automated refactorings. Please start. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Xu Lei Liu. Today I would like to introduce our ongoing work towards a language parametric DSL for refactoring. So, refactoring is a hard problem. So, manual refactoring is error prone and time consuming. To reduce time, we want to write automated refactorings but writing them is still hard. So one key challenge is name binding. So why we say name binding is one key challenge? So let's look at an example first. So here, assume we have this program and we want to rename the X in class A. And if you want to do this, you also have to find all references to X in class A, right? For instance, like X in class B. So, a correct renaming refactoring would only rename the, the reference uh, this x in, uh, to y in, in method f. So why not rename the x in g? It's because it, this x is resolved to x in class c. So finding the right references to rename is one of the name binding challenges in refactoring. But there's more to it. So we also need to take name capture into account. So for instance, if you, want, if you insert the field Y in class B, right? So the preferred renaming would not work as, as before. So why? It's, it's because this Y, it, it will resolve to the Y in class B. So but it, finally, we want this Y to resolve to Y in class A. So one solution is to add a super keyword here to let it re resolve to the Y in class A. So name binding is not solely used in renaming refactoring. Yeah, uh, many refactoring also need this uh, name binding information. For instance, uh, extract method, extract variable, and you learn class, and the method push down as a method pull up. Yeah, I didn't list all of them, but there are lots of kinds of refactorings. So this raises a question. So how do we write transformations that the query and the construct name binding? Yeah, this is the question. And uh, based on this question, we provide the following contributions. So we present an embedded DSL in Haskell for language parametric refactoring, and it has a couple of key features. The first is name binding using school graphs. School graph is a language parametric framework for name resolution based on it. Our DSL provides support, integrated support for querying and updating name binding information. The second is the ideas from strategic rewriting generic term traversals. Using generic term traversals, traversals can be specified concisely. So we borrowed a subset of generic term traversals from strategic rewriting. The third is transformations as patches. We enforce patch philosophy in our transformations. That is, its transformation can only change an AST node at most once. So now let's focus on the first key feature, name binding using school graphs. So here is a, we want to, I want to introduce and illustrate how school graphs enable us to query name binding information. So let's consider the program we used for renaming before. So here is the program. So, in school graph, at first you have, you have the root scope SR, the scope of root, and the, uh, it with a declaration for each class. For instance, A, is, it represents the declaration for class A, and the B uh, for class B, C for class C. Next, each class is associated with a scope in the graph. So here, A, is associated scope is as a scope of A, and the B as B, C as C. So these scopes are connected to root scope via lexical parent edges. So here is a labeled B. So in, in this way, the declarations in the root scope are reachable from class scopes. So next, if a class extends a method, uh, if, if a class extends another class, so there is an extends edge from the extending class to the extended class. So here, for instance, here is a class B extends class A. So there is an edge from, class, from scope B 
to scope A, label E. Class scopes have declarations for fields, for instance, in B, in Y, and the methods. But for simplicity, we only show the field declarations in the graph. Finally, each, uh, each method also has its scope. So here in the case, function, uh, this method F, it has scope SF. And the function uh, method G, it has scope SG. So how to resolve a variable in the scope graph? So to do this, to resolve variable in a scope, we start from the scope and construct the resolution path follow the edges of the graph. So, so you can see if we, if we have a variable x, okay, I think I can, sh okay, sorry. If we have x in scope f, so if we follow the resolution path, we will find that uh, its declaration is x in scope a. So in this case, we know that x in scope f is resolved to x in scope a. But the s in scope a is, is reachable from x in scope g, but it's not visible. Why? Because there is a shorter resolution path from sg to sc to x in scope c. So in this case, uh, this x in scope g is resolved to x in scope c. So now we know, so we we find all the references that could be renamed. In this case, is the x in, fun in method f. So the next, if we want to rename x to y, the y, this y should be resolved to the same declarations, to the same <coughs> declaration as before. So if we follow the resolution path, we will find uh, this, the y in scope f is a result to y in scope b. So, yeah. This is, this renaming is not correct. So our solution is to add a super keyword to it. So yeah, in this way, okay. if you, you need to add a super keyword here, you, you want to let it find the correct reference. So this is give you a flavor of how school graph works. <coughs> so next, I want to illustrate how our DSL supports the transformation and the uh, query and embedding information. So let us consider how to draft a, tr a renaming transformation in our DSL. So first, we start by using a generic traversal operator box to visit all VAST nodes. So next, yeah, we, this box is parameterized by a function whose argument is a pointer to an annotated AST node. And uh, this AN is a function that you give it a pointer to an annotated AST node, it will give you back the annotation of the AST node. Next, yeah, we will compare to match on the AST node. We, for instance, if it's a field access node, yeah, we may want to rename it. But if it's not, we do nothing. This is the second case. Zero means we do nothing. And we, if we want to transform the field access AST node, we can do it if and only if it reference x in scope s. So how we do this? We do this by adding set conditions. So here TGT is a target. It means the target scope of the relation path is s. And, uh, and uh, the name of this x1 uh, is the same as x. So in, so in this way, you guarantee that uh, it references X in scope S. But if you want, before applying your transformation, you also have to check name capture issue. So how to do this? You can do this, for instance, you, you have, you know, if you want to rename X to Y, so you have to resolve this Y in the target scope again. So in this case, the resolve function will give you a resolution path. So the first is, if the relevant path is nothing, it means it doesn't find a valid resolution path. So it's very safe to rename. But if it's found one, and if the name would cause a name capture issue, so we will throw an error, a name capture error. But if it's not, so okay. if it's not, we can also transform the 
program. So that's how our DSL works on this example. So uh, here I want to uh, emphasize why we, how, we how we enforce transformation as patches. Here is a patch function. So you give it a pointer, you give a pointer, you give a pattern. So it, uh, the patch function it will create a transformation for you. So in this way, we enforce transformations as patches. So in a patch, an AC node can be changed at most once. So uh, since our work is an ongoing work, this is a short paper. So we have some tasks, still have some tasks to fulfill. The first thing we have to uh, do more refactoring case studies. So the second is um, we are considering transformations beyond refactoring, for instance, for compiler optimizations. And the third is uh, to develop a standalone DSL with better error messages and ease of use. The reason is currently the DSL is embedded in Haskell whose error messages could be improved and uh, whose who ease of use could be better. So to conclude, we present uh, a DSL for language parametric refreshing. It has three key features. The first is name binding using scope graphs. Second is we borrow a subset of general term traversals. And the third is transformations as patches. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Oh, thank you. This is uh, wonderful. Since the early 20th century, fighting with capture avoiding substitution and getting the definitions right has been a hard problem. So um, um, the classical approach to uh, uh, doing this with compilers, you have a static environment. You just uh, carry around actually the pointers, you know, the environment to actually we're pointing to, and then you're building a basically a dependency graph, right? But, um, you know, in terms of um, if you look at the classical Literature, you know, you're, you're using, saying like, oh, in case I get uh, basically a non-capture avoiding substitution, I'll put in a super Y. Um, the classical approach in logic would have been actually to rename not the, uh, the free variable, actually, but to rename the, uh, the, bind vari the bound variables, because this will always work whether or not you can find the binding definition, uh, binding occurrence of, of the variable or not. Why not do that? So in other words, uh, why is that not uh, good refactoring is, is whenever you, you see there is a Binding occurrence in the way of uh, you know renaming uh, an applied occurrence somewhere else. You rename the binding occurrence, and of course, all the applied op applications. If you know what I mean now, it's like uh, uh, yeah, no, but so, I so in, instead of re uh, writing super dot y, oh, yeah. Yeah. you would uh, you would just try write y and uh, replace the uh, the uh, the x or the mm -hmm. y in in the subclass by y prime. Uh, So, so if you go back to the example, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, so in, you know, this is a look on the left, uh, right? Yeah, so, think, okay. so whenever you want to, re, you know, you want to change x in yeah. class A to y, yeah. you would go into class B and replace the y by y prime, and all the applied occurrences. Uh, yeah. So uh, at first, at, uh, I'm not very familiar with the classical lectures. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, currently, what we are, so what I'm doing is uh, we wonder so so can we are can we are our work is we w we would not uh, how to say it we uh, the the choice is provided by use the choice is given by users is uh, how to re how to rename how to rename this one so. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's another work um, developed by TUDF students. So currently here we, we want to have a standard framework for finding this issue. It's how to fix this, it's, yeah, it's another story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You may go ahead, So, you may want to rename the bound occurrences. It really depends on what kind of refactoring you're doing, right? If you're refactoring a large code base then, and you're renaming things in your API, that may not be what you want. The framework lets you query this information. You can write this renaming transformation. It does not make decisions about uh, whether you want to do this. It gives you access to all the information via the scope graph, which is really building on the same view 
as you have in classical compilers, scope graphs are really just symbol tables. So you can do this other renaming transformation if, th if that's what you want. Um, yeah. Yes, OK. Um, my question is, is related to the previous one. So, yep. But in a sense, the graph you are building, it seems to me a little bit too complicated. Uh, uh, so you have edges labeled by E, edges labeled by P, uh, uh, dashed edges, and then just too much information, I think. Is, are you sure that this is the minimal information you actually need to do this rewriting? So. You have the source, the round thing. I mean, it's a bit too much for me. I would suggest a simpler graph, uh, which actually you described in words when you said, oh, but this Y is related, anytime you have int Y is related to Fritz's question. You, you have a binding there, so th those are no called Y, they are Y primes. So you could represent this easy reasoning in a simpler graph. This is my view, but it's just, I'm not sure. Okay, so um, maybe oh, to the last question. Oh, okay. uh, okay, I'll, I'll respond. Um, I'm not sure I see exactly what, how, how the graph would look alternatively. Um, it is, uh, so the graph contains basically all of the binding information that you need to type check the program. Um, and it may be a bit too much for some purposes, but it may be just what you want for, for other ones. Uh, so we're not making decisions about uh, exactly, um, we're not trying to abstract too much. We're, we're providing all of, all of the name binding information that is in the program. We're trying to preserve all of it so that you can write transformations that you will use all of this information. It may be that there are simpler ways of doing it, which are maybe suitable for other purposes, but yeah, I think that's an interesting question. I'd be curious to, to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. So basically we derive the, this information from type checker. So I think, yeah, in the future you can also simplify it based on your own needs, yeah. Um, I think we should stop here and have lunch. So thank you. <laughs>